Stand by for the latest episode of the Biz News Flash Briefing. The latest news from the world of business and investments. ANC Secretary General Ace Magashule has been given 30 days to step aside from his role or face suspension and disciplinary action by the party. President Cyril Ramaphosa announced late on Monday that these 30 days could not be used to review the decision of the ANC Integrity Committee. Magashule must stand down after being charged with more than 70 counts of corruption and fraud. This is in connection with the squandering of more than 200 million rand in an asbestos roof audit in the Free State. Africa's biggest fund manager and a key investor in South African gold companies says any consolidation in the sector must benefit the country as well as shareholders. The Public Investment Corporation, which manages about 2 trillion rand of mainly South African government worker pensions, has a broader mandate than purely shareholder returns. That's according to Mdu Bolosi, a portfolio manager for mining and resources at the Money Manager. The PIC also considers potential job losses, the welfare of communities in which mining companies operate, as well as the interests of the broader South African economy, he says. Bolosi's comments come amid speculation that Johannesburg-based Anglo Gold Ashanti and Goldfields could be takeover targets for foreign buyers. This is because of their relatively low valuations. Neil Froneman, the chief executive officer of South African gold and platinum miner Sabanya Stillwater, has said the three companies should should combine to avoid being bought by companies based elsewhere. South Africa recorded foreign direct investment inflows of more than 16 billion rand in the fourth quarter. This follows outflows of more than 12 billion rand in the third quarter, the central bank says. The South African Reserve Bank says in its quarterly bulletin that the inflows in the latest quarter were caused by non-resident parent entities increasing equity investments and granting loans to domestic subsidiaries. More than half a million people lost full-time jobs in 2020 in South Africa, while many who remained employed lived off smaller incomes. This is according to Statistics South Africa, which says that total gross earnings decreased by about 36 billion rand, or about 5%. But there was a slight increase in salaries between September and December, when lockdown regulations were eased and employers were generous with bonuses. Stats SA recorded an increase from about 50 billion rand in bonus and overtime payment to about 90 billion rand in the last three months of the year. Yeah. You've been listening to the Biz News Flash Briefing, bringing you the latest news from the world of business and investments. Subscribe to Biz News Radio on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, or by visiting biznews.com.